That's why the book has actually a title, Wobblers and Zapatistas, because Stoughton and myself were trying to understand this remarkable synthesis of the best elements of anarchism and anarchist political tradition and Marxism and Marxist political tradition. They're being constantly combined in North America. And North America has a beautiful history, North American radicalism, which is sadly forgotten. The idea of the, the so-called history of Chicago idea, the idea of the militants around Haymarket affair, which is something that we all talk about and we mention in passing, but we don't make enough effort to understand what these people were actually for. And they created a very peculiar brand of socialism that they called libertarian socialism. They called it anarchism and they called it socialism. They were at the same time anarchists, they were Marxists, and they were putting this, as we say today, red and black together in practice, creating and testing wonderful hypotheses that were very new, not only in the United States, but in Europe. This synthesis that in this book we are calling the Haymarket Synthesis was revived by the industrial workers of the world, all the Wobblies. And uh, the Wobblies, I believe, are probably the most inspiring social movement in the history of the United States. There was not a movement like the Wobblies before, and I don't think there will be, I can only hope, but I have my doubts, movement like Wobblies again. Wobblies are still very much alive. I am a Wobbly. Stoughton Lead is a Wobbly. I see there are a few fellow workers around. But the Wobblies of 1905 and after that, that was an amazing generation that passed traditions of struggle, of resistance, of internationalism, of interracial solidarity that we need to resurrect, that we need to go back to, and that we need to, and this is one of the central arguments of this book, uh, we need to find a way, because the world that we live today is very much alike the world that the Wobblish inhabited back in 19, 1905. It's the world of immigrant workers. It's the world where trade unions are completely ideologically and morally bankrupt. This is the time where the past of the Wobblish should be revived, should be investigated, should be looked into. And unfortunately, there are not too many public historians. One of the greatest, Franklin Rosamond, unfortunately died a few weeks ago. Uh, so understanding the Wobbly experience is one of the ideas of this book. But in putting together threads of Marxism and anarchism, we tried to answer some of the Stoughton's dilemmas, early dilemmas that he had or formulated for the first time when he was very young, when he was on his subway rides, getting his political education. Uh, another book that influenced Stoughton very much was a book called Bread and Wine by Ignazio Silone. Now this is a book that I'm sure most of you know. It's a book that was extremely important for me, extremely important for people who came before me, the new left generation. It was uh, also the first experience for Stoughton in the first introduction to what he came to know as liberation theology. And Stoughton and Alice Lind, his wife, are deeply, deeply impressed and influenced by liberation theology. They're Quakers and they're also liberation theologians. So uh, Stoughton's life and Stoughton's politics was putting all of these different elements in practice and testing them. Stoughton did become, for a brief moment, both American Lenin and Ivy League professor. First an Ivy League professor after a brief stint at Spelman College after when he was teaching with Howard Zinn, and after becoming one of the first advisors to the SNCC, Student Nonviolent Coordination Committee, uh, Stoughton became in 1963 the first director or the first coordinator of the Mississippi Freedom Schools. After that, he went to Yale. And while he was at Yale, he wrote some of the most important books of new left history, historiography. A uh, book that introduced me to Stoughton was intellectual origins of American radicalism, which I still believe is one of the most impressive books on early American history. Uh, Stoughton also wrote a very important book on US Constitution back right then. But Stoughton made a mistake. He went to Hanoi with very young Tom Hayden and older communist historian Herbert Aptekem, and he wrote an excellent book about this called, together with Tom Hayden, called On the Other Side. 
When he came back, he was immediately fired. And he was blacklisted, and he couldn't find a job at a single academic institution ever since. Five universities in Chicago area extended invitation to him to come and teach, and all of them told him when he arrived that they can't take him. So uh, Stoughton at the same time was one of the, and that was his American Lenin phase, became a leader of the social movement, leader of the anti-war movement. He was the person who actually went to speak to Robert McNamara, and I don't know how many of you are remember or maybe know about this famous meeting back in those days. Stoughton went there, he spoke to Robert McNamara, while his friend, Norman Morrison, who was a Quaker, and back in those days you could approach Pentagon, went to the office on the other side, pulled the gasoline, pulled the gasoline over him, holding his baby, Emily, who was I think six months back then, in his arms, and he killed himself. He set himself on fire. Emily survived. And there are many in Vietnam still, there are many poems, monuments to Emily and to Norman Morrison. He was a remarkably courageous man. He was 22 years old. So uh, that's one of the stories that we often forget. And there's a story in this book, not only about Norman Morrison, but also of Brian Wilson. And Brian Wilson was a soldier in Vietnam. And he went one day while he was in Vietnam, he went for a, he got a dinner invitation by a Vietnamese family and they were reciting a poem. A poem was called Emily. It was a poem about Norman Morrison's daughter. And Brian Wilson understood that it is the same Norman Morrison who went to the same elementary or high school, I can't remember, with him, who was the best Eagle Scout he ever knew. And his life was immediately transformed. What Brian Wilson did after that was to go and to sit in front of the train that was carrying the guns to the Contras in Nicaragua, and his legs were cut off. He sought Stoughton Lind, and with Stoughton's help, he wrote a book, Third Bull Legs, which is an amazing book, a really sad book, but also a beautiful book, and I really recommend it. So uh, all of these experiences, all this remarkable life, are in this book as are Stoughton's years that he spent in Macedonia Intentional Community, Bruderhof, which are the original Anabaptists, and then in a place called Youngstown, that most of you know or remember of the famous struggles of steel workers of Youngstown, Ohio. Unfortunately, that struggle was lost. But that was as close as the workers got in defeating U.S. Steel. And this litigation that Stoughton Lind carried against U.S. Steel is today in law books called a prophetic litigation. The idea was, and this is something that we should carefully examine today, uh, that workers and community need to own steel mills. If U.S. Steel wants to go, fine. But the workers and, own, workers and community should be and should become the owners of the means of production. So today when we speak about factory takeovers in Ireland and other places, United States and workers in the United States did this. Not only in the times of great general strikes, but very recently, 1980s. And there's a beautiful movie called Shout Youngstown, which you can find on YouTube, which uh, describes this beautiful struggle of these people who I was lucky enough to meet. They're called the Youngstown Workers Solidarity Club. And Stoughton and Alice Lind are the central members of this club, mostly inspired by the Wapleys, by the industrial workers of the world. So all of these experiences, all of these uh, really amazing documents uh, of a life that Stoughton Lind still is spending in struggle are documented in this book. <laughs>